Hey, up next on the Mar Army Rock Show, I'm excited to have a band with us coming to us as they uh, have on their profile from the southern desert of Israel. They're going to tell us about that, I think. And their latest video, Boiling Point, is out right now. Uh, we've got Yanni and Ron from the Dodies. Guys, welcome. Yay! Hey, what's up? What's up? It's, it's so good to talk to you guys. Um, now, I'm going to tell you, uh, I will get to how I found out who you are in a minute, but first, can you give me just a brief kind of like history or biography of the band? Like how long you've been together and how'd you come together? Oh, well, we've been we've been playing together since we were 14. 14, I think, yeah. We had a band called We Suck, kind of a <laughs> punk band uh, where Ron would just beat the drums and I would scream into a cheap microphone and and uh, we had fun but but eventually uh, I decided to write songs actual songs and and we formed the Dodies after a few years uh, yeah it's been four years now I think so That's the Dodies yeah so four years later, I, I stumble across, I'm out of Pennsylvania here in the States, and I stumble across you through Bumblefoot. So kind of catch me up. How did you guys find Bumblefoot, or how did Bumblefoot find you and talk about that relationship? Well, um, hmm. we have a patron. There's a woman who is our patron uh, that, that reached our album, um, and fell in love with it, and um, decided to budget us, I guess, and fly us to the states and and uh, and introduce us. Well, she didn't have connections, but yeah. she, she's not from the industry or something. Oh, but wow. uh, yeah, she just decided that she's gonna, you know, she's gonna help us any way she can. So, yeah, we got to Orb Studios in Austin, Texas. It's it's a nice, like it's a fancy studio. Uh, and the man, the the guy who owns the place, he played for Blue October, uh, and he uh, he still plays with them. But uh, he liked our music, and he introduced us to a guy, and that yeah. guy introduced us to Bumblefoot. Yeah, I mean, we kind of found our way somehow. To Ron. Well, that seems like just such a, a stroke of luck. Do you kind of scratch your head? And <laughs> I mean, what a what a world we live in that that could happen that way. Yeah, it's random as fuck, man. It's, it's <laughs> just uh, we would never have thought this would ever happen. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, so let's talk a little bit about some of your music now. Then, uh, Boiling Point is the first single. It's uh, it's off an upcoming record. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the record. How long did it take to work on? Uh, is it ready to go? And uh, give us some of the, the history and story behind the record. Uh, we recorded the record. We wanted to. Rec- we started recording it in in Austin. Uh, but then Ron's visa. Ron just doesn't have a, a, a work visa, and it's very hard to get into the states when you are not an American. Sure, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's it's just um, we. Ron was interrogated like every time we got into America, <laughs> and they would warn us every time, like, "Don't push your luck." I mean, we're gonna fuck you up. <laughs> You're not gonna come back here ever again. Now it's funny, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So we recorded the uh, f- three songs in Austin, um, and then we had the visa shit and Bumblefoot yeah. just said, you know, yeah. he would fly over to Beersheba to where we live in southern Israel. Yeah. So we can finish recording the album because we couldn't fly to the states to do it, and and that was very generous of him i mean he he finished the tour with yes he was touring yes and he came to the to ugly shithole to record the album it it truly was like um it's just not the the fanciest place i guess and but it sounds the album sounds good i don't know well it's ready it's ready yeah 
Yeah, for folks that don't, you know, know here in the states, we, we you've, your experience is uh, similar to a lot of folks. I know we have a lot of Canadian bands, a lot of Swedish bands, and it is expensive and difficult to come here as a musician. And I, uh, I hope that gets a, a better one day. Now, um, so uh, tell us a little bit about like your local market there. I've had I've had a couple other bands from Israel, and we've had um, Indie Butterflies, Dream, and um, I forgot uh, the other band at the second. Um, uh, Rusty Boilers has been on here as well. Talk a little bit about the music industry because geographically i guess in the rock world are you guys a little isolated from the rest of the world over there yeah 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 i guess you could say that um we're isolated as far as like um it's not like europe or the states where we're we're kind of like bordered here you know we're not very friendly with the countries around and and it's just um, there's not much of an industry. You're kind of stuck, and, and, and at the same time, we're really influenced by Western culture. You know, we see all these big bands coming out of uh, Europe and America, and we're like, "Oh, we want to, we want to do it too, yes, we want to, we want stands. But we're stuck. You know, we're like we're trapped. It's 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 kind of uh, I don't know. It's it's hard. It's hard. Well, the cool thing about the the modern world, you know, I'm talking to you here out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and we've got the internet. So the video came out. Tell us, it's a very cool video. Tell us a little bit about the making of the new video and and what that experience was like, and give folks a little maybe they haven't seen a little peek at what they're going to see in that video. Well, it's a kind of a southern, uh, like an American southern style video with a green screen. Yeah, Yoni had this dream to, to to shoot a video in a in Texas, actually. Something like the real thing, southern style. Yeah, I wanted to like shoot it in some barn or yeah. like <laughs> like kind of have a honky tonk honky tonk dancers and and you, but you know we just didn't have the budget or the ability to do that like and uh, we couldn't fly over to the states yeah as soon as we realized it, it's 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 getting problematic to come back for now at least so yeah we decided to get creative um yeah so we did that green screen wacky self-aware thing <laughs> yeah we just kind of made fun of it you know we just tried uh doing it as aware as we could so it doesn't come out too cheap we made it cheap on purpose yeah well, it had a cool effect to it, and I, I enjoyed it. As soon as I watched it, that's what made me gravitate to you guys a little more like say let me learn more about these guys Back in a very different video that's about a year old is the video to, uh, won't last. Now, tell us what the vision was behind that one. Was that kind of like a, a peek into the rock world, or what, what was the vision behind won't last? That was supposed to be a like a lyric video, and it kind of escalated quickly to <laughs> uh, yeah to a real and actual video. So yeah, you you can see throughout the entire video the the lyrics in all sorts of uh yeah yeah (laughs) yeah all sorts of ways i guess um but it's it, it was way harder than a lyric video i think to produce Oh, but, you, you yeah. added a lot more than a regular lyric video to that one for sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah but it was fun it was a fun one now, now I'm sure you're tired of this question, but I gotta ask it because people want are gonna see all the time. Why a two piece? I mean, it takes a lot of talent to do what you guys are doing. That was the first thing I was drawn to was the amount. And I mean, it's in a positive way. I use the term noise, a lot of noise and a lot of sound the two guys can make. Um, was that a conscious decision? Was that just a necessity? Talk about the the being a two piece. It was kind of a necessity. Because yeah. uh, there was a band in Bersheva that kind of did that keyboard one hand thing, uh, but we never considered doing that until we couldn't find a bass player to go to the states with us. <laughs> we, I was like, you know, begging people, please, please, you must play with us. Don't you understand? We will become rock stars one day, and and. 
they couldn't really people people just got scared people got scared to do it you know like they were sort of on board to play with us but it was so the plan sounded so unreal and so um you know out there and, and unorganized that they just people didn't go for it and and ron just came up with the idea of of doing that keyboard thing and and we sounded better than we ever have with the bass player like for real that's a lot cheaper a lot cheaper to do with two guys too right <laughs> yeah it's way more convenient yeah. and now now it's just you know, every time we have to go and play shows, and if we play in the states, um, it will be way easier to just pay for everything and, and and you know not be stuck together in a small car and sweat on each other and hate <laughs> each other. You know? Yeah, it, so it started as like a necessity, but yeah, it ended up being a, a real good thing yeah it kind of defined our sound and that that's one of the things bumblefoot really opened our, our eyes when he said uh, that's our sound now we kinda oh good Sorry. consider it as a as a live thing but yeah he said we should he was the first one to say we should record it record our album that way so, uh, yeah. Now, as I, as I watch, uh, just as I interact with you a little bit, and I watch some of the videos of all the stuff you guys were doing, and the, the uh, humor seems to be kind of a part of your artistic expression. Would that be kind of fair? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. It's just, um, you know, we take what we do very seriously, but I think it's it's... Uh, even too serious sometimes, but uh, I, I guess we just feel like humor is a, a big part of our lives in general, and and, and uh, sometimes it's easier to convey like hard, tough emotions with with um, with a bit of fun inside, I guess, because. Uh, you know what, what? What I like about a lot of scientists in their in the books they write is that they try and, and bring out like a very hard to understand message into kind of a palatable book, like a book that is, they they try to make their message mainstream. And a lot of artists, a lot of poets, make a, a like a very simple emotion too complicated in their. Uh, in their poetry, and I think it's you know when you do your when you express your depression with fun, uh, there's something that that it's, it's just kind of enjoyable, almost to be sad. It feels kind of um, it's easier to relate to a person that way. Well, it, it, the fun the fun message you is really what comes across to me. And uh, when people watch your videos, and I, I encourage people to go on your uh, Facebook page and watch you guys work in there and producing the record because there's some really fun little kind of behind the scenes things, uh, whether or not to wear socks and some chickens are in there and all kinds of fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Socks and chicks. Oh yeah. The, yeah. The you block. did your research, man. <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, I enjoyed watching those videos, and I guess the real question is now: Are you wearing socks when you're playing the guitar? Or did you go barefoot? What was the solution to that video? <laughs> We're wearing socks. Which one is the sock one? Uh, the, you, the pedal one. Yeah, you got your guitar pedals oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. I'm not doing it with socks anymore. <laughs> just uh, <laughs> the goofy moment. Well, it was fun to watch. Um, I guess one or two more quick things. Um, I noticed that you got a website, so I want to give you a chance to plug your new website. Why don't you let folks know where you want them to go to learn more about the Doties and find your music and all that? You got Facebook, thedotiesband.com uh, is it our latest website? Um, yeah. The the Dodies Band, it's the D-O-D-I-E-S band.com. 
Uh, and you know, we're on Facebook, Instagram, all that. Uh, yeah, we're pretty easy to find. And then it looks like your uh, previous records on BAM Camp, the new one when it comes out in April, is that going to be an iTunes, an Amazon, a BAM Camp? We're going to be able to get it here in the States. Yeah, it's going to be available everywhere. Um, yeah, Spotify, Apple Music, all the platforms. All yeah. Yeah. BAM Camp too, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So but go- it's going to be on the platforms, yeah, on the streaming ones, the big ones. So go over here in the States, man. Go to all your digital platforms and uh, to my international listeners around the world. Go to whatever platform you listen to. I'm sure they'll be available there. So, um, hey, uh, Yanni and Ron, man, I appreciate you guys being here on the Marmy Rock Show. We're going to follow the Dodies and we're going to play some music tonight along with this interview. So um, thank you guys for taking the time and and we'll keep following you guys. And and when the new record comes out, we'll share some of that music for sure. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much.